Welcome to day three. Today we're going to talk about priorities. Now some of you might have heard me already speak about this. That's okay. I want you to hear it again. The reason why I want you to hear it again is because there's still a lot of shame and mindsets of shame around looking after yourself and your health. So let me just talk you through priorities again. If you've got a pen and paper, write it down. If not, you'll see a PDF just below and that will have what I'm talking about there so you can see it. So I have the four non-negotiables of priorities of how you do life. Now, if you don't have one of those elements, you can just put a line through it. There's no uh, ifs and buts about that, that's fine. Um, so number one is your relationship with God. Now, doesn't matter what you believe in, I know we've got people of different religions watching at the moment and that's totally fine, but I think that the thing that we can all agree on is that we are spirit beings living in a natural world. The reason why we put our relationship with God, our creator, who, who you believe in, as number one is because if we don't have our spirit telling our soul and body what to do, then it leaves it up for our body and our soul to tell our spirit what to do. And that's where you get a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, other um, practices will call it imbalance in your life. For instance, you're uh, a very emotional person, you're led by emotions and this and that, and you know you can't bring yourself to a place of um, security because you're just getting blown around by the wind because your emotions, your soul is leading the way instead of your spirit. If you can tap into your spirit man and be led, for for example, I will tell you that I'm a Christian and I believe that um, the, the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, and they lead me to then make the right choices that affects my physical body and affects my soul, my personality, my character. Or otherwise, if my body starts telling my spirit what to do, I wouldn't get up and go to church. I wouldn't get up and do as good as what I do in life or you know, look after the kids because it's around the wrong way. That's why number one, our spirit man has to be looked after, our, our relationship with our creator and to nourish that because out of that comes so many great values out of how you do life. So what's a way that you can make that number one in your life? What's the time that you can actually hand over to, in order to make that happen? You know, what's that time that you can um, make every day in order to bring that into balance so that can be number one? It basically needs your most time. So how do you make that happen? All right, number two is your health and well-being. The reason why I make that number two is that, again, your health shouldn't tell your spirit where you're at because otherwise you just be in a state of disease the whole time. And disease means dis-ease in your body. There's something that's not quite right. Where is you, if your spirit man is leading the way, it tells your body that to be healed and it will be healed. To be healthy, to be strong, your body will follow suit. And we're gonna talk more about that in the next uh, couple of days. I just, I can't get into that right now. Um, so let me keep going. Number three is your relationship with your spouse. Now I know we have a few single mums here. We also have a few single girls watching, which is fantastic. Just leave that line blank. That's totally fine. I'm not talking to the people who are married, uh, do have a partner in life. Your relationship comes next with them, okay? Why? Because we can't bring the kids' relationships above that because you know what? The kids will grow up, they'll leave home, and guess who you'll be left with? Yes, your spouse. So you have to cultivate your relationship with your spouse um, in order for the longevity of it, for your sake, for your emotional health, for how you do life, is you need your spouse's support, you need the love, you need the connection there, and you need to pour a lot of energy and effort to keep that alive. And we're gonna talk about that as we get to love and connection in the, um, I think it's like step eight uh, and so forth. And you know, that you go through seasons of uh, being sexless and you go through seasons of just repulsion and you go through seasons of all these things. So it's important that we keep bringing back the priority to uh, number three, our partner and our spouse and how we do things there. And then number four is our children. That's when they take their place. We've got God, we've got our health. If we don't have a health, then we can't look after our partner and we can't look after our kids. You know, we've all been there. I know we've all been there where the kids are running around and you're there going, I just can't move. I'm exhausted. I am fatigued. I can't focus on you right now. That's why we have our health as number two. 
we have our health even before our partners because if we aren't loving ourselves and we're not in a good place physically, you know, we stop saying, I don't want to have sex with you, largely because we feel gross and disgusted about ourselves. We need to address our health before we address our relationship with our partners so that we can actually then get that flow through and that balance. I hope that's making sense. One, our relationship with God. Two, our health and well-being. Three, our relationship with our spouse, our partner. And four, our, our relationship with kids. Then you'll see that there'll be a line on that PDF there below. And what that will be is for you to then interpret and make up what's next. What's the priorities from that point forward? So it could be work, it could be church, it could be serving, it could be voluntary, it could be hobby, it could be, I'm just trying to think, family, friends, social life. The thing is if you bring any of those elements above the kids, above your husband, above your health, your life will end up in ruins. I know that's a really, really strong thing to say, but you need to keep that set for, or three, depending if you're a single mum or not, very, very strong and bring the rest underneath that so that, um, yes, you've got a well-rounded, a well-holistic approach to the circle of life that you have in. So I want you to go ahead and fill out what's next. What do I next want to invest my energy and effort into? And what's important to me in order to bring success? Don't put something because you think it's right. Don't put in there volunteering at church if you, um, for example, uh, have an um, uh, elderly parent that you need to look after and you, need, you know that you've got limited time with them and that you need to invest into them. That's your next priority. So don't do what you think should be. Do what really is a situation. Okay, who really needs me right now after I've looked after myself, my husband and my kids? Who, what next? What next do I need to put it into? Some of you, it could be hobbies. You need to get more creative. You've lost your fire, you've lost your passion. You need to actually invest into your hobby in order for, again, it links back up to your health to be alive and to be thriving in this life. So consider that. Don't discard hobbies as an insignificant thing. It's actually a very significant part of your life and what you do. Don't discard friendships. Don't discard even family and the connection that you have there. They're all important. You just need to work out what's right for you. And I need you to put it somewhere that's obvious so that every time you look at it, you're reminded and until it's concrete in your mind that you can go bang, 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 bang. I know what my priorities are. I don't need to look at that piece of paper anymore. You need to get this grounded in you so that you can move forward. It's good. Hey, the other thing that you'll find about PDF is just a bit of uh, weight loss goals. It's not all about weight loss. We're gonna talk about that in two days time but just will help you to see your progress and your transition. Okay, so if, go ahead and fill out your current BMI, body fat percentage, uh, weight and so forth, and then at the end of the three months or 12 weeks, we'll then have a look again and take uh, fill in the blanks from that point forward. But you'd still need to measure your success in some way, shape or form. Um, and that's why I keep asking you, where's your energy at right now? Give me a one to 10, give me a one and 10, because we need to, um, it's hard, it's a hard thing to measure feelings, okay? So there's not, not a real scale there that we can actually scale things on because you're gonna feel better, but it's gonna be hard to verbalize and put that into words how, you're, how you've changed things. Um, the happier you get, that's a really, again, a really hard thing to scale. So as much as possible, uh, fill out the journals that I give you, fill out any PDFs, any uh, questions I ask you because we need to scale this and see how far we've come. I don't know if any of you have ever journaled before, but when you go back and read and you go, oh, gee, I thought very differently back then to what I do now. We want the same thing with this. And we wanna see the dramatic change happen in the next three months. So please, please, please take the time to write it out. Thank you already for the comments that have been happening uh, on Facebook. Um, I appreciate that in advance. So um, write out your priorities, write out your goals, and I'll see you tomorrow.